You know, I designed all these tanks. All of them were built to, to specifications specifically for Bedell. I mean, literally, this height is me and my boots, like right there. Oh, wow. What this allowed us to do is focus on quality within each block. Mm -hmm. What used to happen is fruit would come in and just all get put together into larger tanks. Mm -hmm. When you do that, you lose the ability to really focus on specific characteristics in mm -hmm. the vineyard block. With the different tanks, we have the ability to, to ferment differently. So how big are these uh, tanks, volume-wise? These are 1,603 gallons. All right, take a look. So this has just started fermenting. What you can see, if you look in there, you got grape berries and seeds and nothing else. And that's what the sorting table did. Across the board, when you look at our ferments, we, we have nothing but berries and seeds. So how long does one of these ferments take? Probably about 27, 28 days from start to finish. Oh wow, nice and slow. That's, that's ideal, and we'll see. It depends mm -hmm. on what we taste. Fermenting? Not fermenting. These are finished. This is maceration at this point. Just keeping them warm, keeping them in contact with skins. Mm -hmm. Probably looking to press in a week or so. So I mentioned to you earlier the, the different fermentation regimes. And what you see here with that first one you just tasted, Bedell B, that's one being fermented in a fruit forward sort of style. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to do is retain the fruit forward characteristics. To do that, you ferment it cold, you're not as aggressive with the pump overs, we won't macerate as long. All those things, little steps trying to preserve the fruit. This one here, we ferment it hot, we do aggressively with the pump overs, and what we're trying to do is extract and get the mid palate and the finish. Better to have two components that are exceptional for those things and blend them together than to have two wines that are both mediocre, kind of both have a little bit of everything. When you said we were going to do a punch down, I thought you meant we would actually have like a plunger. There's a tool if you like there to use a tool. tool. No, I know, but <laughs> if you I just... use the tool, you can't. Oh, it feels nice. Doesn't it feel Oh, it feels fantastic. <laughs> wow. So we're reaching in, trying to find any cold spots. And why do we want to get rid of the cold spots anyway? Well, just to keep it homogenous. The whole point at this stage, we want the heat for the extraction. Uh. Okay, it's healthy stuff. It's good. It's clean. Do you now? Do you want to like squeeze berries at all between your hands, or do you no, want to avoid I mean, doing that? I mean, at this stage, they're already they're really they're really breaking down. All right. Okay. Wow, this really there is uh, great. Can we do that again? When you, when you come through and you see winemakers and it's like they're totally clean, they're not the winemakers. Yeah. That's all from uh, Dill Cellars. Thanks, John, for having us out here today and showing us everything that goes on in the harvest. Did I do an okay job? I uh, do mediocre. You can come back there anytime. I guess we'll be back next harvest, maybe. I, can I do the punch down again before I go? Yes. You just call this a stirrer, right? There's no other technical term for it. A stirring wand.